And then maybe three minutes later, uh, a very chilling message that says center, which means the center of the city is now the target. There's no time to add any other words, simply center. And then even more chilling uh, is when you see this word, Rocketta. Before we continue, we invite you to follow our channel, the only American show reporting live from Ukraine every day. Let's see if uh, Putin lets us talk to Joseph Lindsley uh, today. Joe, are you there? I think so. Well, I'm here, but I hope you can hear me clearly. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. I am uh, having some microphone technical difficulty today. It's a new problem every day this week, uh, which is bizarre. And, uh, you know, Bob, as I, I heard your the advertisement you just had for, for ketamine, and that's a word you hear pretty often here. Uh, you know, the, the PTSD toll is very heavy mm-hmm. uh, for not just soldiers, uh, but for everyone in the society. And uh, today, November 1st, uh, in Ukrainian language, uh, November, me, uh, the word for November is Lestopod, uh, which means uh, leaves, some, the month of falling leaves, uh, literally. And uh, today is also All Saints Day, tomorrow All Souls Day, the, the days to remember uh, sort of union of living and the dead. And, you know, here I am in Kiev in the capital, and I, I realize that in Lviv, a day like today is a major holiday. You would hear church bells ringing throughout the entire city. Uh, you can hear the chants sort of being broadcast into the, the cobbled squares of Lviv city. That's something you don't see in Kiev or Kharkiv or Odessa. And I realize uh, really the, the reason for that, uh, why you know such religious holidays like today are celebrated very uh, sort of abundantly in Lviv, but not in much of the rest of Ukraine, uh, that's because of the Soviet times. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, Lviv was not under Soviet oppression for as long as the rest of Ukraine. It was part of... Uh, uh, Poland and Austro-Hungarian Empire, and, uh, and and in Lviv they held on to their traditions. But in so much of the rest of Ukraine, the Soviets really did a lot to destroy religion and culture. And so I, I didn't think of it till today, but I never hear church bells in Kiev. Uh, there are churches, uh, it just it's, it's not as much as part of the culture uh, as it as it is in Lviv. And that's really you can feel that mark of, of that the the trauma of Soviet times. Uh, in, in, in so many ways. And that's just one ind- indication of it. And, you know, that it's that it's Sovietism. That is exactly what Ukrainians have been trying to get away from from ni- since 1991. Uh, when, by the way, George H.W. Bush uh, urges them to stick with Moscow and not to be independent. Uh, you know, they keep trying to pull away from that legacy of totalitarianism, of destruction of culture. And now there's, they're, of course, facing that every single day. And I, I would say that the mood, uh, you know, people keep going, but the mood is is dark and heavy, and there hasn't been a major uh, sort of nationwide missile attack in a while. So there's a lot of people assuming that something's coming. Uh, but every time you hear the next air raid alarm, you think, okay, maybe this could be something big. Uh, but there, I'd say there's a heavy mood uh, of depression. Uh, really, it's you encounter it, uh, you know, ev- everywhere I go. And I think you know, there's this like all good people kind of feel a sense of guilt. So even the soldier at the front line in the trenches uh, might feel guilty because he's alive and his friend is dead or a soldier who loses his leg feels guilty because he's out of the war. And there's a young woman who's a medic who's still in the fight. Hmm. Uh, Or maybe the doctor at the military hospital feels guilty as he's treating guys who've lost legs because he's never faced bullets himself or even to the level of like someone who lives in Odessa feels guilty because they don't face bombs as often as people in Kharkiv or people who work at a uh, coffee shop in Kharkiv that has been bombed feel guilty because they don't work at a coffee shop in Kupiansk that gets bombed more often. And, and, and this is, you know, so every, you know, everyone sort of feels like they could be doing more. Uh, and that serves as an impetus to, to try to do more. Uh, but it does create this sense of uh, there, there's a strange solidarity in everyone feeling a bit of guilt that, you know, that there's more that can be done in the victory effort and and even knowing that you know someone who is you know there in the trenches feels that they are not doing enough even even compared to someone say sitting in a cafe uh in Uzgorod, uh you know on the border with hungary uh you know the the everyone has different levels of saying hey we we need to do more uh especially among you know uh, the non-elites right the regular people who get up and, and and go to work every day and don't try to run away uh from from the war and and it's, you know, I, I just saw uh, there's an air alarm at this moment in this uh, for the city of Kharkiv, uh, where, you know, 30 miles from Russia, where I spent so much time. And, you know, I just I thought it might be good, interesting to share what, you know, a little bit of what it's like. But 
uh, so often this is the sequence. Uh, this, uh, this is what I saw, for example, a couple of nights ago. You check your uh, Telegram app uh, to see what happens when there's an air alarm. You know, are, are missiles coming your way? And so, for example, a couple of nights ago, and it's in the Russian language because most people still speak Russian there. And the uh, the alarm sounds and it says uh, the, the text message says target spotted. Uh, then usually with some expletives, which I can't say on the radio, uh, but, you know, fill in the blank. Uh, have been launched. Uh, and then several minutes later, uh, in the direction of the city, uh, missiles in the direction of the city uh, to shelter. And then maybe three minutes later, uh, a very chilling message that says center, which means the center of the city is now the target. There's no time to add any other words, simply center. And then even more chilling uh, is when you see this word Rocketa in all caps, which means there's a rocket coming and you got about three seconds. Uh, really chilling to see that. Uh, and that word Raketa in all caps. And then as sadly as often the case as it was a few days ago in Kharkiv, uh, the word She, which means again, and then She, which means again, and which means that there more and more rockets are hitting the city. And then at last, those words saying uh, uh, Horizon Chesto, the, the horizon is clean, uh, is clean, uh, but stay in the shelter because the threat is still there. And that's just sort of, you know, these are the sort of daily messages that people in the city like Kharkiv are receiving on their telephones. Sorry to hear about the difficult uh, and darker mood there. And you can't possibly know what it's like to be there. But your description uh, comes close to allowing us to share that experience, Joseph. Let me leave you with something uh, a little brighter. Your alma mater, Notre Dame, uh, has climbed up to number eight in the uh, Big Ten football poll. Uh, they have a bye this week. I, don't, I know you have uh, more important things to do than keep track of uh, good old Notre Dame. But uh, after a big win uh, when they beat Navy, uh, things are looking good for them. It's a bye week, by the way, this weekend for them. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's good. Uh, yeah, please only give me good updates on this on this topic, Bob. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I will say that uh, that Notre Dame victory march, you know, onward to victory that, you know, from my time going to school there, that echoes uh, here throughout uh, throughout the war. And uh, and that's the victory I care about the most. Uh, but it's always good to get positive news where we can. And uh, by the way, those Ukrainian soldier musicians, the cultural forces, they're mm-hmm. currently in Austin, Texas, uh, and they're connecting with uh, VFWs and synagogues. You know, I have a lot of elite friends in Austin, IT people business and politics who talk about defending freedom all the time and they're not interested in ukraine but the mm. good thing is is that the the uh, these soldier musicians including a few who lost limbs in battle are connecting with the real the hard-working people there in texas as they travel uh, as they continue their uh, two-month tour of the u.s upward and onward to them uh, to you and the people of ukraine and uh, go irish thanks joseph thank you for introducing ukraine on your social media pages that's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. (laughs) 